Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to update your rooted Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL to the latest Android P developer preview, uh, developer preview 5 or beta 3 if you want to call it. And this is pretty much I think the last beta before the final one that's being released next month sometime in August. But today we'll be showing you how to update your phone to that. So to get started we need to do a few things on our phone and one being we need to remove the screen lock now just in case we can't access or TWRP can't access our data partition uh, and can't decrypt it I should say it's a little bit annoying to have to go back here after flashing the images and then trying to reroute our phone so I prefer if we can just do it all in one go so we're going to go to security and location tap on screen lock put in your pattern and just change it to swipe and this will remove your device protection and also I think fingerprints so you will need to set that up after we update but uh, that should be alright. And once you've done that, we can go ahead and go to our computer where we'll need to download a few things before we begin. So first up, of course, is the SDK platform tools. Now this is just ADB and Fastboot and a few other files that we need uh, for our phone and our computer to communicate with each other. So we're just going to download the one for Windows. Of course, you can download the one for your operating system. So just read it and agree to the terms. Click that checkbox right there and then download or click the blue download button. Once you've got that downloaded, we need to download the factory image for Android P for our Pixel. So we'll come over here and just scroll down until we see the download link table and just download the one that's right for your device. Of course, whether you're on the first generation Pixel XL or the 2 and 2 XL. So download the one that's right for you. It's same as the SDK platform tools. You, go, you have to read the terms and conditions and click the blue download button. Now we need to reroute our device, so we need the latest TWRP image. There was an update to this, I think it's now 3.2.2.0. And just download, or hit up the download links for your device. This is the Google Pixel 2 page, I'll have a link below the one for the 2 and 2XL. So just click on the link that's right for you. And I'm going to click on the primary download links for Americas, and wait for the page to load. Okay, it looks like our European page loads a little bit faster, so we'll do that. And you can see we have the installer zip file. Now this is only necessary if you want to install TWRP permanently on your device. Uh, I don't see the point of this if you have to disable your screen lock every time you want to use it. Uh, but in the case the screen lock actually decrypts for you, you can uh, download the installer here, the zip file. But of course you're definitely going to need the image file here. So once you've got the image file and all the installer zip downloaded, last thing we'll want to download of course is the Magisk beta. So the latest version of this. Just click on the orange download button right here, or download link I should say, and that will download the latest version of Magisk Beta for you. Now in the end you should have these five files here. So we've got Magisk, the platform tools, TWRP bootable image, the TWRP installer, and the Android P factory image. So I've just saved everything in one folder, and you should as well, just to keep things organized. And first things first, we want to open up the platform tools zip file, and that will just bring us up uh, into this platform tools folder. Now if you want you can extract everything but uh, we'll just extract the things we need. So we need the ADB EXE and the two DLLs underneath. We also need the fastboot EXE so hold control to select uh, multiple items. We need the fastboot EXE, we need the libwin pthread-1 DLL and all the make f2fs and 2fs EXEs and configuration files. Extract those eight files now our folder is going to look a bit jam-packed right now, but that's fine. We can close the platform tool zip file, we're finished using that. So next up we're going to open up the factory image, the largest zip file there. And then we're going to open up the folder inside, and we're going to extract these three files outside. So the image zip file, the bootloader image, and of course the radio image. We're just going to extract those three files outside. Alrighty, so once you've done that, we can close the factory image and we should be left with these files here. And the next thing we want to do, of course, is to make sure we have the TWRP installer, so this zip file, as well as the Magisk zip file copied over to our phone. So I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to copy. And this is where we want to plug in our device with the USB cable. And then what you want to do is, of course, just go down here, change charging this device via USB to file transfer and then if you go back to your computer you should see uh, either Windows set up your device or your device pop up and it should very soon here we are the internal storage so I'm just going to copy 
the magisk zip file and twrp install it in here. So I'm just going to paste. And then once you've done that, so these files are here now, we can close the window and reboot our phone into the bootloader. So of course, it's always good practice to back up your phone before doing anything like this. Uh, luckily, I don't have anything to lose because everything's already backed up. But just make sure you got your photos, your contacts, apps, your downloads, pictures, whatever it may be, off of your device and onto a computer or you know in the cloud somewhere, uh, just in case things do go wrong and your device will wipe itself or will, you'll lose your data. So it's always safe to have these things backed up. Uh, luckily for me, most of it's in the cloud, if not already on my computer. So what we're going to do is hold the power button with the USB cable plugged in. We're going to tap on restart. And as soon as the screen turns black or freezes, we're going to hold the power, sorry, the volume down button. So I'm going to hold it right now. And that'll boot our phone into the bootloader directly. If you give it a moment, it may take a few seconds extra. So just keep holding it until you reach the bootloader, like so. Now we're in the bootloader. We can go back to our computer here. And from here, we're going to test that our device is connected. So in the same folder where we have pretty much everything extracted, including our ADB and fastboot executables, you want to go up to the address bar here in your Windows Explorer, and then type in CMD, and then press Enter. And that will give you a command prompt window. It will look different to mine, and it will definitely look different if you're using Mac or Linux. You're going to have to find your own way around that, which uh, I suppose will be pretty simple as well. Uh, I know on Linux it's simple, but on the Mac, I don't know if you can open a command, sorry, a terminal window uh, directly into a folder, but I'm sure you'll figure out how to change directories regardless. But the commands are very similar. There are only a few syntax uh, changes, and I'll have those in the screen up here right now. So just follow the one that's right for your operating system, of course. I'm going to be using the command prompt window. So yeah, just pause this image if you want to view it. But uh, otherwise, we can get started now. So we're going to type in fastboot and devices. And that should open up our, oh sorry, return our serial number for our connected device. Now, I presume you've already set up your fastboot drivers uh, when you rooted your phone. If not, I do have a video down below that you can take a look at. It's not too long, uh, but that will get your drivers sorted out and also get your platform tool sorted out for future use. Anyways, once your device has been detected as connected, we're going to flash the newest bootloader image. So I'm going to type in fastboot, flash, bootloader, leave a space after that and drag in the bootloader image, and hit enter. Now I'm going to do this a little bit differently uh, to what I usually do, and we won't be flashing the other partitions, we're just going to be focusing on the active slot right now. So once you've finished flashing the bootloader, we're going to type in uh, fastboot, fastboot, reboot, dash bootloader, just like so, and then hit enter. And once you've done that, and our phone's back into the bootloader, as you can see, we're going to flash the latest radio image. So we type in fastboot, flash, radio, leave a space in the end and drag in the radio image down here onto our command prompt window and hit enter. Then we're going to reboot our phone into the bootloader once more. And to do that, we're going to press the up arrow key on our keyboard twice to go back two commands, which is our fastboot reboot bootloader command. So that's good. And then once our phone is back in the bootloader, as we've seen, we can now go ahead and use the fastboot update command. So we're going to type in fastboot, uh, two dashes, so two hyphens, type in skip, another hyphen or dash, and then type in reboot and then type in the word update, leave a space after update, and then drag in our images zip file. So it should be the pretty big one, so mine's one and a half gigs, and just drag that in over to our command prompt window, and hit enter, and that'll start extracting everything, and right now we just need to wait for, yep, for the stuff to extract, and it'll flash automatically to our device, and once it's done, our device will remain in the bootloader, where we'll be able to reroute our device using TWRP, and I'll show you how to also install TWRP if that's something you want to do. Okay, so you can see here we have an error saying data write failure, too many links. Uh, you can try a number of things to solve that. You can either reboot your phone back into the bootloader once more and then also disconnect and reconnect the USB cable. But if that doesn't solve it, it could be a pesky driver issue uh, because of how Windows 10 likes to do things. 
it may install some other driver other than the Google USB drivers and that could also play a part in this issue so I'm going to try again just uh, press the up arrow key to run the same command as before and it's going to extract that stuff Alrighty, so we're finished now. We're going to boot the TWRP image, and to do that, we're going to type in fastboot, boot, leave a space after the boot, and drag in the TWRP image file, and hit enter. And our phone should start booting into the TeamWin recovery project, custom recovery. And from there, we're going to step one, flash the TWRP installer if you want to. That part is optional, but of course, if you want to reroute as well, we're going to flash Magisk after flashing the TWRP installer. But if you don't want TWRP installed, just skip that and just go straight to flashing Magisk. So you can see my phone booted into the TWRP main menu without having to ask for any of the uh, screen lock patterns or anything like that. So that means we're on a good start. Uh, if you're having issues doing that, try rebooting into Android once more and or even just try rebooting uh, back into the TWRP image. So you're gonna have to do the same command we did previously but we're going to start by installing the TWRP uh, recovery to our device permanently. Uh, this is optional. So if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. Just skip ahead. I'll put a link to the time you can skip to. So this will pretty much install TWRP to our boot images in both the A and B slot. Okay, that's done. So we're just going to test it out. We're going to reboot back into the recovery. Disconnect our USB cable so there's no you know, black magic trickery. And we're just gonna wait for our phone to boot into the recovery mode. And hopefully that has been replaced by TWRP. So I guess later we can see if TWRP can decrypt the data partition uh, when there is a screen lock. But otherwise, uh, we're going to install Magisk now. If the touch screen works. Okay, if that happens, then just force your device off and try again booting into TWRP. So you can do that by holding the volume down and power button or probably just the power button for 15 seconds. Let's see if it works this time. Okay, it does. That's good. So we're going to install Magisk as usual. Just tap on that and swipe to flash and that should flash just fine. So this means all your Magisk modules should remain as they were before you uh, updated your phone. So if you had any enabled, then they should work just fine or should be re-enabled. But if you do run into issues booting, you might need to uninstall Magisk, which will get rid of all your installed modules, and then you'll just need to flash Magisk again. You never know, there could be some uh, incompatibilities with some of your modules with the newer version of Android. So our phone's gonna boot up now, I'm just gonna plug in the USB again, just so it can charge itself. And after we boot, we should see Magisk installed properly and that we're on the developer preview 5 or the third beta of Android P uh, rooted, hopefully passing safety net, although of course that is not guaranteed as you all may have known by now. And we also have TWRP installed. So the last part of this video will be me just checking those apps and of course applying a screen lock, booting into TWRP and seeing if it can decrypt the data partition. Now I know that's always, uh, not always a 100% kind of test. I do have some instances where I've read that other people could decrypt the data partition, or I should say other people's versions of TWRP on the same build of Android and on the same version of TWRP, but when I try it, it just didn't want to decrypt anything. So I guess your mileage may vary, so just keep that in mind when using TWRP. Okay, so my wallpaper is still there, which is good, and all our settings seem to be in the same place. So we're just finishing our system update here. That's fine, no screen lock. And let's see. Yep, PPP5. And I don't think there are too many changes in this one. And yeah, so we're just gonna check Magisk real quick. Wherever it may be, there we are. Magisk Manager on the latest version. Let's just check out Safety Net. And if it's installed, then you know we're rooted as well. Okay, so we're passing safety net right now, which is uh, a nice touch, a nice bonus. And I think the last thing we want to test, of course, is adding a screen lock back to TWRP. Uh, sorry, 
adding a screen lock back to Android. Let's uh, do that real quick. Okay, so I guess it's not too happy today, but I guess that's expected in a way. So we're just gonna leave it off from there. So thanks for watching guys. That's how you update your rooted Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL to the latest and greatest Android P developer preview or beta. And yeah, while keeping root and keeping data. So we're gonna keep doing this until we pretty much reach the stable release of Android P and we'll see where that takes us as well. So thanks for watching guys. And as usual, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And if you are interested, I'd like for you to join the or my Discord server and we can chat there if you want or if you have questions there as well. I guess it just makes it easier for you to contact me in any way if you want to rather than you know finding a video and having to comment on that. So yeah, I'll leave that link down below as well. And as always, happy flashing.